once again, it's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Mariama Diara Mariama herself. Take it away, Mariama. Well, thanks, Shaka. The international community and many Kenyans have expressed the historic significance surrounding this week's election, the first presidential poll since 2007 election that sparked post-vote violence, resulting in more than 1,000 deaths and hundreds of thousands of displaced people. It's also the first vote under the new constitution which allowed Kenyans to choose their <clears throat> county governors and senators. Our question of the week asks, why do most people think that this week's election in Kenya is the single most important <laughs> poll since the, uh, since the East African nation gained her independence in 1963? Well, send an email to africatv at voanews.com or post your comment on our Facebook page, keyword Straight Talk Africa. As we encourage you to join our Facebook page, the internet and social media in Kenya played a critical role in this year's elections, from allowing Kenyans to question candidates to spreading messages of peace to avert new bloodshed. Well, let's begin with a comment from Ijobi Joseph, who wrote to us from Kampala in Uganda. He says, experience is the best teacher. Maturity in politics means accepting the majority's wish and getting along with it. Remembering what Kenya went through in the past election, we can now see this country has matured. We hope this will be the order of the day in the politics of this great nation and other neighboring countries may borrow a leaf from its election outcome this time. Another reaction comes from Abiri Omari in Tanzania who says, the reason behind is that this election is conducted following two important events in the history of Kenya. First, it's conducted under, under a new constitution, and secondly, it is conducted following the political violence in the previous election that led to the formation of a coalition government. Therefore, this election is a test for democratic maturity of Kenyans. So Shaka, a lot of talk about political matur maturity in this East African nation. Indeed, uh, Mariama, uh, I have to say frankly that uh, this should make Kenyans very, very proud people because uh, Kenya is strategically very, very important, not only for Kenyans, by the way, but also for the region, Africa, and the world. In other words, Kenya does not only belong to Kenyans, it belongs to all of us. And we, of course, we are better off to see peace prevailing in Kenya. Very, Interesting. Very well said, Shaka. Let's move on to Kwasibwe Alex, a Straight Talk Africa fan from Kampala in Uganda. And he says, these elections are by far the most important because they are conducted without the incumbent, under a new constitution, and more so the first election after those of 2007 that claimed the lives of so many Kenyans. Another one comes from Sandra Medi, a Facebook loyal from Lilongwe in Malawi. She says, because this is a make or break for the country, it's either going to go smoothly and everyone is happy, or a few individuals decide they are not happy with the results and start violence, which is going to be much worse than last time because I don't believe that people have forgotten what happened to them last time. Shaka, make or break are very strong terms. What do you make of this one? Well, people may not have, uh, you know, have uh, not forgotten uh, what happened last time, but I think a lot of people, frankly, are willing to forgive uh, and move on. And I think that um, as we saw the process, uh, it was pr probably one of the freest, really, uh, fairest uh, electoral processes that I have yet witnessed. And uh, I have really covered elections for the last 20 years uh, here on The Voice of America. So I think, frankly, that, uh, yeah, there will be doubting Thomases here and there. But I think that uh, the people of Kenya, at least so far, appear to have acquitted themselves very well, Mariana. Well, Shaka, um, so far so good. I will totally agree with that um, statement. Um, Kenyans in the United States, though, were not able to vote, but they've also been following the whole electoral process very, very closely. 
We went to the School of Advanced and International Studies at Johns Hopkins University in the heart of Washington, D.C. to see what they think. We got a chance to speak to two students, Mwangi Chege, and, uh, who is actually a current student, and Atiena Odwar, who is a former student, now a governance consultant. Whoever wins should be able to just safeguard all the, the reforms and the progress that we have made. And um, the other thing is also about just pushing forward the economic development. If we can continue on the path that we've been in over the past 10 years, that will be great. Um, that is something all the livelihoods of Kenyans will be improved. The biggest thing um, with Kenya right now is really national cohesion. Um, Kenya is divided um, ethnically. There's deep-seated mistrust. And even though that tends to play out politically, so I hope that whoever is the president will communicate strongly verbally and also through the action that he's a president for all Kenyans. So moving forward, um, We've made a lot of progress um, with the new constitution, so there's a lot that has to be implemented. So the future of Kenya really depends on how um, the provisions in the constitutions are implemented. Well, Shaka, we also went to a local Kenyan hangout, so to speak. We went to Swahili Village, a popular eat-out place with delicious food, where ma manager Gordon Oyugi was very kind to let us film in his restaurant, and we appreciate that. There we spoke with three people, Chris Mutai, Margaret Kamba, and someone named Chief Kinaro. Yes, that's his name, Chief. I would like to see the country move forward uh, economically, create jobs, be secure, and all these other aspects. And I think either one of the candidates has a, a very good chance and good capability of doing it, so I'm okay with it. Moving forward, I expect to see more of uh, democracy and uh, power to the people and progress in that country. It was disappointing that the diaspora was not given uh, a chance to vote, except for uh, those in uh, 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 close uh, proximity, uh, Arusha, Sudan, Uganda those who are given the opportunity to vote. But those of us in the uh, larger diaspora, the US, the UK, Australia, United Arab Emirates, we are disappointed because we expected uh, that we could be given the chance. Well, Shaka, some Kenyans in the diaspora were not completely happy that they didn't get an opportunity to fully participate in the election process. But overall, I think they are very positive and they're moving forward. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mariama, for bringing us this week's audience reaction.